like it just started snowballing literally within the next three months she was already at 600,000 followers and we were shocked and at that point is where our whole family dynamic really shifted because I was like wow this is something incredible that I want to be a part of as well and help support her along the way so we just really all embraced the app and actually all created everyone in our house created an account and just really supported each other and was there and was really involved. And I think that was really key and what changed our family dynamic as a whole and brought us really close together was when we got involved as a family. I'm Summer. And I'm Mike. And we got married with children. It's been 12 years since we got this gang together. And we're still running the rapids of living with a blended family. And sometimes that is just not easy. If you're looking for support and tools when it comes to divorce, step parenting, co parenting, and giving it your best, you're in the right place. We're talking about everything. You ready to get this party started? Always. You guys, today is such a fun and unique interview. Yes, we're talking about blended families. Yes, we're talking about step parenting, but we're also talking about social media. We're talking about open conversations when it comes to alcohol, sex, all that stuff that happens with teens and the things that you might be nervous about. We're also talking about what it's like to have a famous TikToker as your daughter. Today's guest is Kyle Kaplanis, and he's all of those things that I mentioned. He is a stepdad to four. He is the father of a famous TikToker, and he also has amazing amazing insight into social media in the family and doing social media with your kids and having those open conversations with your kids. There's so many good things out of this episode, so many great takeaways. I'm not going to spoil all of it, but listen out because there's a lot of good stuff. Enjoy. Kyle, welcome to the show. So excited to have you here today. Thank you, Summer. I'm really excited to be here. You know, it's really cool because you, um, we're going to talk about your whole family dynamic, but just, just to get everybody super excited, we're going to be talking about kids and social media and how it actually helped you and your relationship with your kids by doing social media with them and being involved in their social media. And I love that we're going to be talking about this because I think there are so many different opinions on social media when it comes to our kids. So before we get into all of that, because I'm super excited to talk about that, can you just give us a little bit of your background and your what your family dynamic is? Yeah. So my family dynamic is really, really quite interesting. I'm a stepdad of four. So I met my wife actually on an online karaoke app. She was living in the UK. I was living in the US. And oh, how fun. Yeah. <laughs> what so a I, fun way to meet. <laughs> it is. And I remember asking like, hey, do you have kids? And she's like, yeah, I have four. And I was like, holy, okay. So <laughs> it was quite an interesting thing there. And but you know no what? kids yourself? Zero. I have none okay. biologically myself. Okay. But so I, I took the leap, you know, like there was just something about this whole dynamic that I just wanted to be involved with. So I took the leap and actually moved out to the UK to be with her. And this, we're now living in Canada. It's just a crazy story, but all, all four kids live with us full time and they just become my own. The cool part of our dynamic as well is dad, biological dad. He's the same one for all four. We're actually quite close. We're just one big kind of happy family and which is really fun, but I have, my oldest is 19, then a 15 year old and a nine year old boy and a seven year old, our youngest. So it's a really fun, crazy filled life that I had no idea. If you told me that this was going to be a thing 10 years ago, I would have thought you were crazy. (laughs) So it's been fun. That is awesome. And it, has it been 10 years that you've, you've been blended? It's been five, five Five years. years. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's a lot, <laughs> you know, to walk into, you know, that we I've had people on the show where it's, you know, there's one child and they don't have a child of their own. And it was, you know, how much that was to take on, but you're, you came in to four and they were at, I mean, so that means the youngest was around two years old. Correct. She was okay. two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I don't know why I said 10 before. And you said your youngest is seven. Do the math summer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so you, so there were some, some teens involved, young kids, like what was that like? Was, were there hard times? Were there good times? Like, I'm sure there were both. What was it like? You know, it was, it was quite interesting because we got to meet, because me and Emily met over like online, we were able to talk before just jumping into it. So it wasn't like this random guy just showing up out of nowhere. We were able to kind of explore and the kids were introduced to me prior to me kind of coming into their life as a physical presence. So I think that dynamic was kind of nice. So when I got there, they were all like, they knew who I was. We were able to talk and they were understanding of me being there. And then moving in was, they were actually all really pumped and excited. I went there for a month prior. So I was able to, you know, kind of see how we all worked as a family because it was going to be new for all of us, myself included. And we just got along so well. The their kids' dad, his name is Dan, me and him, it, it was a, not a rocky start at all. He was a little bit shocked at first when, you know, Emily kind of found a new, who's my wife, found a new partner, but he was really open about it. And him and I actually became, we were gym partners. Me and him still talk. When he comes, he lives in the UK. He comes to Canada. He stays with us in our house and pre-COVID, obviously COVID, we couldn't do Christmas this year together. But prior to that, he'd always come and spend Christmas with us. So yeah, it's been a- That's that's amazing to hear, you know, especially- I mean, I, it can go either way, right? There, there's, there's women that are like, oh, I can't be friends with her. I can't be. <laughs> and then men, you know, there's sometimes there's that like, you know, macho jealousy type of thing going on. And mm-hmm. to not have had that, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So I'm such a, I, my big thing always is putting, putting the kids first. And it sounds like the, the fact that you are able to do that and all get along means that, you know, the kids are a priority for all of you parents involved, but that's not easy for a lot of families to do. No, (laughs) it's it's not. And, and especially coming from, you know, you came into this with here's four kids, not having, you know, raised kids before that. So where, where did that come from? What was your mindset in terms of, I'm going to like, was this a choice that you made? Like, what were you thinking that was like, I'm not going to have any drama here. Cause it sounds like there wasn't any of that going on. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Like I, I asked a lot of my friends, my family, and they're like, Kyle, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Cause it's like a big thing, right? Like, I mean, that's a big deal for kids. Jeez. I don't know. There was like something about this whole situation that just felt right to me. And I kind of just took the leaf. So my background, I was a respiratory therapist at the time I was working in the hospital and I, I worked in the ER and intensive care unit. And so I talked to a lot of people and I I remember sitting down with this one patient actually who was on a long-term care floor and I asked him and I was like, hey, what, can I get some advice from you as like living your life? What is something you can give back to me? And he said, Kyle, life is so short. Like if there's opportunities that present themselves to you that just feel right, do not miss that because it will never come back again. And I just kind of, it just kind of thought to me that I was like, you know what, this is something I need to do. I need to just go with this. And it's been, it's been a blessing. And and I think my mindset was just, Hey, don't think you got to be perfect. And, and I went into the relationship as well with the kids of not trying to replace anybody. I came in yeah. as just my wife's, you know, partner, and I'm going to be there as a friend and somebody that you can kind of count on. I wasn't like, Hey, I'm now your new dad. And I'm still not like that to this day. But the, I let the kids choose to come to me because my my upbringing as well is my father isn't my biological father. He's my stepdad, but he is my dad. He came into my life when I was eight years old. So I kind of understood it, that concept of just letting the kids come to you in that role without you trying to force it. Right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's amazing. And I applaud you. I wish there were more <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> so... Let's talk about because you like, let's talk about actually what you do for in in business, because that's going to relate to what we're talking about today. (laughs) Yes. So definitely. Well, it it, it will kind of tie in together when we talk a little bit more about this, but I'm the head of talent for a talent management company 
that represent some of the top and largest TikTok creators on in the yeah, like on earth. So Michael Lee, he's the eighth largest TikTok creator in the world. He's one of our exclusive talent that we represent. And we represent probably about 15 creators and we have a total following of 230 million followers that we kind of house under our, our platform. So, but yeah, it's a cool story on how I got into that and involves my kids. So that'll be yeah fun that we can kind of dive more into. Yes, I'm so excited. And you've got your stepdaughter is like a huge TikToker, right? That's correct. Yes. Oh my she, god! Can we can we can we say who she is? I mean, I'm guessing she's famous, so <laughs> we can, absolutely right? for sure. Her name is um her Jade Vincent, and on the app she goes under the name of Jade Can Dance, and that's J A Y D E Can Dance. Okay. Yeah. And she has 2.1 million followers and it was just really exciting time on, on kind of the whole process and how that got into it. And like I said, my background was in healthcare. So social media and being a talent manager was nothing to do with each other. And I kind of fell into this role because of my daughter's success, which was, yeah, really fun. Yeah. So let's talk about that and how, you know, how, how, how this actually helped with, with your relationship. So kind of starting at the, you know, beginning of social media with, with your stepkids. Absolutely. So there's a lot of parents and, you know, like we have to think about ourselves when we were kids, our parents didn't really relate to the things we were doing in our life and they didn't understand. I trust me, we were there in that place. So TikTok kind of came about, it's been, TikTok's about two years old prior to TikTok. It was musically, we moved to Canada And the kids didn't have any friends, right? They didn't know anybody. So they turned to social media to engage with their friends and just do fun content. So my daughter was, when we moved here, she was just 16, right? So she turned to TikTok and she was just started to make some really fun content. And at the time, like TikTok is very music based. So you hear a lot of the same sounds, the same songs. And me and my wife would be like, oh my gosh, can you please turn off your phone? It is so annoying. (laughs) If you're going to make videos, please go to another room. Uh, I don't want to hear it. Go to your room if you want to watch this stuff. We're kind of annoyed by it. And there's a lot of parents that probably are sitting there like, yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, and we were, you know, we were in that, that space as well. So my, my daughter would always show us her videos like, Is, are these funny? And we we're like, yeah, we were really supportive of her, you know, creating content. And she's a dancer. So we actually owned a dance school in the UK and she's been dancing her whole life. Oh, so wow. that's why her name on the app is called Jade Can Dance. Okay. And at the time there was not any dancing, like, believe it or not, now you think of TikTok, you really think of dance. She was one of the first ones on the, on the platform to do it. And so at the time she was like, Hey, going to dance until 10 K like 10 K followers. So she started dancing on the, on the app. And with one day she hit her 10 K and I was like, Oh my oh. gosh. Yeah. And that was crazy to us. Like, right. 10 right? K is still a lot of like following. And she was pumped like beyond pumped. So I was like, wow. So she kind of carried it on and this, like, it just started snowballing literally within the next three months, she was already at 600,000 followers and we were shocked. And at that point is where our whole family dynamic really shifted because I was like, wow, this is something incredible that I want to be a part of as well and help support her along the way. So we just really all embraced the app and actually all created Everyone in our house created an account and just really supported each other and was there and was really involved. And I think that was really key and what changed our family dynamic as a whole and brought us really close together was when we got involved as a family. Yeah. And you're doing something that's creative together too, which is super fun. Exactly. Have you ever wanted to send an anonymous message or letter to someone? For me, the most powerful therapy has always been to write. If I feel angry, sad, super inspired, or just wanting to feel understood, I write. And often I write letters to someone when those feelings involve a particular person. When it comes to divorce, co-parenting, step-parenting, new relationships, and everything that comes along with blended families, there tends to be a lot we don't say and a lot we wish we could say. And it feels so good writing a letter as if you were going to send it to that person. It's like this huge pressure off of your chest. It's kind of cathartic. Well, 
we want to offer you that forum where you can have a voice anonymously, of course, if there's something you've always wanted to say to someone, but knew that out of respect or to save drama, or because you knew it wouldn't be received well, now is your chance to get it out there and have it be read because we would like to serve as your voice. So here's what to do. Head over to everythingalways.co forward slash forum. That's F O R U M everything co forward slash form and fill out the form. We won't know who you are as it will be sent to us totally anonymously. It just hits our inbox, but we have no idea who it's coming from. As they come in, we will be sharing these on the podcast. We'll be able to reply to you. You'll still remain anonymous unless you reply back and we'll let you know if it will be featured. It's a hundred percent confidential. So what do you say? Ready to get it off your chest? Okay, back to the episode. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So, okay, there are some parents that are like, I won't let my kid on TikTok because, mm-hmm. you know, there's certain things that I'm that I'm seeing on there. It's not appropriate. And like you said earlier, there's some parents that are just like, I don't I don't get this. All I hear is this song on repeat over and over again and <laughs> and it's annoying and sometimes I hear it in slow motion and sometimes I hear it, yeah. what's going on here. But they're not, you know, they're, they're very, they're skeptical about their kids being on social media. What do you say to that? And is it, is, what is, what is the right answer for some of these parents? Yeah, for sure. What I have to say to that is we have to think of their generation as a whole new thing. Like, yes, when we were growing up, we didn't have social media and, you know, the internet's only been around for since like 1998. So most of us, when we were kids, we didn't have that, but you have to remember these kids grew up in the era of technology. So Mm -hmm. to tell them they can't do that is like saying you can't go play at the park with your friends, (laughs) right? It like, it doesn't make sense to them. So I think it is really important to embrace and understand that. But just if you're like nervous about it, which I understand there's some weirdos out there and is just go in it with them. So just be supportive along with it or create an account where you can follow what they're doing. And if they are young, say, hey, look, I'm going to check the things you're doing on there. And I think that's okay. And most kids, if you're still respectful in a way, they're going to allow you to do it. Our kids share with us everything, which is just really cool because we're always so open about it and allow them to be who they are. So it's been it's been really fun. So I think, and TikTok is actually a really safe app. There's a lot of people that might say some bad things, but ultimately TikTok is very... I think out of all platforms, they're really the strongest in filtering inappropriate things. They're really clean in that regards, but it's fun for parents too. So I think parents should get involved and get on there and it it would be such a fun thing to do as a family. Yeah. It's so funny because my daughter and I will actually look at, she'll laugh at me and make fun of me. She's like, look at your for you page. And for anybody who doesn't know TikTok that much, your for you page is basically showing you stuff that based on the things that you have liked before and correct me if I'm wrong, or if I'm not saying it correctly, but it it shows you the things that it's like, you're going to like this. You're going to think this is funny. And you know, Mm -hmm. my for you page has all these like parents and doing funny dances, funny skits. It has lots of puppies on it. (laughs) (laughs) And it's so funny. And then she'll, she'll show me hers that, you know, it will have puppies and stuff too, but it's a lot of, you know, younger kids doing different types of stuff, but we'll look at each other's. And then I will ask her, I'm like, okay, let's do one together. You have to help me here. Help me with the dance moves, (laughs) you know? And it's true. It's like this, we end up having so much fun together and it's, It is like you said, something that you brings you into their world and like what's important to them, which technology is hugely important in, in this world in general. Right. And then Mm -hmm. of course to kids, because this is how they're interacting. I mean, especially with schools shut down and so much of the world having been shut down, social media and technology has been what's actually kept them connected to their friends and to other people and been their form of, of socialization. I love that you like you said, that whole being open with each other. And I think that's so key. I think parents get really nervous because especially if you have children, maybe that are scared that they're going to get in trouble if they talk about something Mm -hmm. or if they know that you're not going to approve or they don't feel like it's safe conversation to have. And I think 
that's when kids are probably maybe looking at things that you might be worried about. But like you said, if you're open and you're already talking about those things and you're open about what they're doing, what you're doing and kind of going, going into it together, there's less of that. You don't really have to have as much fear of what are they doing behind my back or what are they seeing that I don't know about? Because maybe they will see something, but if you have that open relationship, then they can talk to you about like, oh my gosh, look what I saw. What do you think of this? You know? Yeah, no, it's so true. There's, I don't know why there's a lot of parents that are afraid to talk to them about these kind of controversial topics, but I think it's really important to have these conversations with them because when they can come forward to you and they feel comfortable, they're not going to get misinformation because there's so much of it out there and kids are so gullible and they're so naive that they just believe a lot of things that they read. And I'm, I'm a very analytical guy. So I'm always like, you guys Google it first. Don't just believe things, but they come to us and have these conversations and, you know, it could be about sex health. It could be about all these different topics that some parents are like, Oh, I don't want to talk to them about, but they're so comfortable and we're all comfortable talking about it, that they are going to get the proper guidance and information and be able to be safe out when they are and learn some of the, you know, proper techniques of going out and just protecting yourself from, from all sorts and how to contact us. If you're in a situation, that's not appropriate, like versus when I was a kid, I didn't have that with my parents. So I've been to parties where I felt like I wasn't almost safe, but I didn't want to call my parents to say, Hey, come pick me up. Cause I was kind of too embarrassed or ashamed to even talk to them about these situations and had to like find rides home from other people where our kids will call us if they're, let's say they were at a party and one of them decided to drink and they're underage. At least they feel like, Hey, I can call my parents and they're not going to give me a hard time. They're going to come pick me up and make sure I'm safe. And that's really important. You know? It's so important. And, you know, I, I had that growing up where my parents were always so open and it's, it's interesting choices that I made growing up that are different from friends who had parents that they were like, I couldn't even bring up the word sex. My dad would kill me. You know, Mm -hmm. it's just like, it's so horrible. Like you do not talk about this. You don't talk about, you know, drinking. If he knew that I tried this, like, and (laughs) my parents were so open about their experiences and like, oh, we know what's going to happen when you go to this high school party or here's what's going to happen there. And it actually, having had all of those conversations and actually knowing what to expect, here's what to expect when you go on a date, he's probably going to want to kiss you, you know, like all these things. It was like, oh, Okay instead of going into these things blindly. And then I also knew that I could come back home and share the experience with them. And there wasn't going to be judgment. There wasn't going to be any of that. Cause there was just, they were just so open and you know, you can always tell us anything. And I think because of that, I made better choices than I would have if it were, if I were coming from in a place of fear to, yes. you know, having to talk to them about any of that. Exactly. I mean, cause teens are so curious, so they're going to look it up. Like if they're, if, if they're experiencing, like, let's say, sex, you know, when you when you become a young teen, the sex kind of goes through your mind, you're hitting puberty, you're like really curious. So if you can't talk to your parents about it, or at least somebody like an adult figure in your life that you trust that will give a good advice, you're going to look it up and you might come across, like I said, misinformation and really, or you try to go explore on your own with somebody and yeah. it, it, it's might not be the right timing or you're, you're not prepared for it mentally and, and physically, like having the right things in your life. So it's really key. Like our 15 year old, she's so funny. Like she has a boyfriend, but he doesn't live in our town. He lives like eight hours away. They're kind of like in a long distance relationship, but we always bring up things like, Hey, when you go see him, you know, we're going to bring you uh, condoms and things like this. And she's like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> but the thing is like at, at 15 pe- parents might be like thinking, Oh my gosh, that's so young. And yeah, I do agree. But I remember being a teen myself, it, you can't really f- stop them from doing things. So I'd rather her be educated and understand if that was going to happen, make sure it's the right thing. And if so, use the appropriate tools out there to keep you safe. And it, I said to her too, like, if you ever feel like you're ready to do that, to come to us and make sure like, hey, I'm ready. Can you supply me with a condom, right? Like, I know that sounds crazy, but I'd rather her be safe than to not have that or be ready and at least have that conversation with us. And the cool thing is like, 
it, she's not weirded out now. We've had so many conversations that she's willing to just talk to us. We talked about uh, about all sorts of stories. Our 19-year-old daughter, she's very open with us about all sorts of things. Like she can talk to us about exes and relationships and crazy stories. And it's not weird. It's just, right. yeah, it's like kind of friends, but we're giving them the right guidance from the mistakes that we've made or our friends have made growing up to make sure that they are in life. But I know it's important that these kids do make their own kind of choices, but just giving them the right guidance versus us saying, no, they're still going to go do it. I mean, I, I was a teen. My parents told me no all the time and I was like, Oh, okay. And then behind closed doors, I went and did those things anyways. Right. <laughs> no, it's so true. Instead of having to look back and, and have something happen where you're like, Oh darn, I wish I would have I wish I would have just had that conversation or I wish we would have, oh you know, yes. it, because yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, there's, there's so many things that can go awry <laughs> things that can <laughs> go wrong. And the more knowledge that we can equip them with and make them feel secure and not like they're bad people because they're curious about sex or bad people because they're curious about, you know, drinking or whatever that is, mm. the, the more that they can feel that, that like, hey, you guys are on my team and you're supporting me and I might make some mistakes, <laughs> but you're you're there for me. I think that's so important. It is. And it's it's safer for them in the long run too. Like even with the drinking thing, these teens, trust me, you, your parent, you, you know, you could be a parent listening to this and you're like, no, my teen does not do those things. And I'm, and they might not there. There's, you know, a lot of teens that don't, but there's a lot that do sneak out to go to parties and they say there was no drinking, but there was. And the thing is these teens don't understand their tolerance level. They don't understand what's how much is right. And some of them are getting sick and they might be afraid. Oh no. Like Sarah downstairs is, is being sick everywhere because she drank too much and she could have been in serious trouble and these kids are afraid to say something so with us like if my daughter was to go to a party that's 15 and one of her friends was sick and there was no parents involved she would call us and say hey can you come help like my friend you know like at least she would have someone to call that she trusts so I I really am grateful for that for sure yeah oh my gosh It, it totally and I know you know I'm sure that as they become adults, they'll look back and if, you know, become becoming parents themselves realize, wow, what a, what a gift it was that you guys gave that relation, you know, that, that kind of support for them. Absolutely. So let's talk about, because I'm sure it's, you know, people are thinking about this too. Like what's, what is life like for your stepdaughter who has, you know, this huge following on TikTok? Has that, how is that, um, impacted your life and the siblings life. <laughs> it has impacted us a lot because it might sound crazy. There's some parents that might be like, Oh, wow. They're like social media star, but it really is like a celebrity life. Anywhere we go, she gets noticed. It doesn't wow. matter if it's, it could be a corner store. It could be going to the mall. It could be a restaurant. I mean, when we're at a restaurant, we have people come up to us if we're at the mall, I mean, it's just crazy. We went to the mall once and she did a little meet and greet, but it wasn't anything that they planned. She made an announcement the night before and over 2000 people showed up. The <gasps> mall had to get, the mall ended up like kicking us out because they were like, so, like, not like rudely, but they're like, this is too chaotic. We can't kind of house this. We weren't prepared for this. And we said, neither were we. Um, but <laughs> even, even we went to a town called Kelowna for, uh, which is in British Columbia, Canada. We went there last summer and, you know, we don't know anybody in there, but we were just at the beach and all of a sudden these bunch of these kids and even parents came up to take pictures with her. So it's changed our life in that regard. We get noticed as a family. So because because we're really involved in her TikTok, everyone knows who I am. They know who, you know, her mom is and they do know her siblings. So the younger siblings, like my my daughter, Jasmine, who is the 15-year-old, she does not like being in that light. So it's changed her that some people have been friends with her because of her sister's success. And so making friends for her is a little bit tricky. She likes people who like her for her and not because of her older sister. Yeah. And then my, my younger two, a lot of them know him online. Like my son's a big gamer and some of his friends, friends that he plays with they are like is it really your sister and she goes up and talks to them on the headset and then my youngest she gets noticed because she has a my seven-year-old actually has a following of a hundred and 
50,000 followers and she gets noticed at her school and her friends and it's just the it's crazy it's changed a lot of things of course <laughs> well how how has it like her her personality because that's a lot to to take on right at a young yeah. age and I see a lot of these young kids you know that it's it's quick it's really quick fame you know to to get all of this recognition and you know has it affected her in positive ways and negative ways both mm -hmm. yep it's definitely it's affected her in, in positive ways as far as it's kind of built some confidence for her it she is able to monetize so she makes a great living now for this so she kind of does this full time and she's you know 19 making more money than tons of people but it has its negative things like i have to say those that are looking for fame, it comes with a ton of responsibility. Yeah. You have to remember now that you do, like she has 2 million people. So think of 2 million people following you and judging everything you do. You have to watch what you say. You have to watch what you do. Even in public, she can't just, she has to always think about what am I doing? Is somebody going to take pictures or videos of me that's not appropriate? And so like, it, like I said, it comes with a lot of responsibilities. And with that, regardless if you're perfect, you can be the most perfect like influencer or, or creator, you're still going to get a ton of hate comments. So she has to deal with that on a, on a daily basis and people say all sorts of stuff. And so she has battled with quite a bit of stuff. I mean, she, she's battled with um, uh, like an eating disorder being... Yeah. And, and things like that. So she's she's getting help on, on that regard. But you can't, it's like, she she has a hard time being able to express that too, because you're going to get a lot of pushback or you will get some support. So it's just, it, it is a battle. There's a lot of mental health issues with creators. Um, there's a lot of people that are starting to talk about it a lot more because even though TikTok is a lot more authentic and people are being themselves, there's still a fakeness that these influencers put on Right. to give to their followers so they're not always like down or depressed but at, behind closed doors they battle a ton of things and so that's why i'm really grateful for the support i talk to so many creators that don't have family support or their family just doesn't get it they're still telling them go get a real job or go back into society but they have nobody to talk to so i'm grateful that we're here for her to be able to come to us and talk to us about these issues and we're able to support her throughout throughout all the hard times as well as the good times. Yeah. You know, it's something interesting that you said, and she's probably experienced this on a bigger level than, you know, just other kids that are just doing a regular TikTok account or, you know, Instagram, but they still get, we've seen it with our own kids where you get, you know, ugly comments, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it really gets them, it can really get them down. How has she dealt with it? And does it still affect her or has she come up with some type of coping skills or mindset like how, how does she deal with that yeah so her coping skills and she says this and she's been on several podcasts and a lot of people do ask that because it's a really you know important question to ask and so what she does is she hates the haters so meaning <laughs> like she won't like like she doesn't uh, let it affect her physically she'll call them out and if they're like let's say they're they say oh you're ugly and she'll be like i know i know i really am like <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me something I don't know. Like, what do you like? Or, or it could be anything like, oh, I, I hate that shirt you're wearing. She's like, it is pretty lame shirt, isn't it? Like, she'll kind of go along with it, and people don't know what to do once that happens. And it's, it really is a good, effective method. I think in, in anything in life, if you kind of agree with somebody that dis, like, disagrees with something, then they're almost like you stump them. They're like, you totally uh, yeah. I don't know what to do. And that's been working really good. Like she did a video. Somebody said, because she was battling with the eating disorder, she did mention it in her social media because she does like to kind of keep her followers in the loop and yeah, maybe, you know, express herself. So somebody said, oh, if you're hungry, then just, I mean, if you're like, if you need to gain weight or whatever, just eat. And she was like, oh, okay. So she did a video like being really sarcastic and was like, hey, mom, I have the cure for my eating disorder. And she's like, what's that? She's like, all I have to do is eat. Like, it's that easy. And so that turned in that video like blew up. I mean, I, I don't remember how many views, I think maybe 10 million views or something like that. Wow. And it that turned into a really fun 
series that she now does is called like that easy and it's just really sarcastic responses back to like stupid comments yeah and and people love it it's really relatable because it's true so many people think they have the answers to these problems that we have and it's like okay like yeah you know all the answers but that that's what I would say for anybody that is getting hate comments to either like either block them and just delete the comments so you don't have to go back and look at it or like hate the haters meaning like just go along with it and just they they will stop trust me yes oh yeah I agree I love that that's just great life advice (laughs) anytime (laughs) that you're getting something negative like that how has it impacted your parenting has it made it more stressful at times like or do people come out to you like do you feel like people are are you know saying stuff to you as parents because you've got this you know person who's who's just known by so many people yeah we do get a lot of questions from like parents about oh how 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 are you dealing with this or some people are like wow why why are you letting your 7 year old have a social media account we yeah. get in a couple pushbacks on that but you know ultimately i think our parenting it it's helped because we're we're a lot closer now but in in the other side of things because i'm also jade's manager it's been really difficult with that too because i know her personally she's my stepdaughter so it's hard when it comes to business and personal life uh, we're, we don't see eye to eye sometimes on that where i'm like hey you got to do this and this that's kind of changed a, a little bit of things but we're we generally are pretty good as far as like our parenting i think it's the cool thing is is now because of this whole situation i was able to free up a lot of our time so me and my wife are home all the time so we're able to be more involved in all of our kids life and be able to go to the events that they need to go to and things like that but it's been a positive change more than anything like negative. That's awesome. And that's because, you know, it sounds like you've, you've made it that way, you know, no, for sure. How are you helping? Because people might be thinking, you know, I, my daughter's got, you know, pretty good following or my, my son wants to be a TikTok star, you know, people that might be thinking that as they're listening to that, you don't, Mm -hmm. you never know. How is it that you you work with people and like what type of people do you, do you work with in terms of helping manage or or build their build their following? Yeah, so our agency is called Project C and we house we tend to focus on creators that have quite a substantial amount of followers. In fact, my daughter having 2 million is on our really low end of the people that we manage. So but as far as like smaller creators, there's tons of opportunities for them. There are so many management companies, but to be honest, when you're a smaller creator, even if you just have like a million, two million, you can do everything on your own and build your own support team, it, believe it or not. What, because we work with the top ones, they just have tons of stuff going on. They're like a proper business. We're like the CEO of their business because there's just so much going on that we help them with their brand deals, partnerships, reach out to PR, helping them with different opportunities. Some of them are dabbling into podcasts now. So we have to like work with producers and all those kind of things. But for those that are looking to become an influencer, you can do everything on your own or get the support. If you are a kid or you're a parent, like if you're a parent right now and you have children that are starting to grow, I suggest being involved with them and helping them. And you can, you know, set up an email so that way brands could reach out and you could talk to partnerships. And the cool thing is there's an app, the new app called Clubhouse. I don't know if you're oh, on there. Oh, yes. It's, I'm like <laughs> becoming addicted to it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's awesome. I was literally on that before jumping on here, but it is a really great place too. So for anybody that's listening, if you are looking to get in that space or you have kids that are uh, growing in there, you could jump on Clubhouse and you could talk to so many people. There's tons of rooms in the space of influencing and there's great places to network and get information and everything like that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so true. And I, I, I love it. I love Clubhouse. Well, you also have a podcast, right? That talks about all this kind of stuff. Or I maybe do. not necessarily related to blended families, but it is talking about TikTok for, for creators. It is. It my my podcast is called Biz Talk. So it's a play on word with the whole TikTok name, but I talk the business part. So uh, I talk to creators of all sorts, 
some of them are really large creators like Willy Wonka TikTok, who is famous among the teens of the app. He's got over like 20 something million followers. Um, he was one of my guests on the show, but I also talked to people that are small businesses. So the parents listening are like, this would be kind of interesting for you probably. Cause I do talk to small businesses. I talk to brands. I talk to creators who are talking about their professions on TikTok and are having some serious success. I had a gentleman on my show recently called Law by Mike. He's actually a lawyer, personal injury injury lawyer, and he's built a following of 4 million. So he's the largest followed lawyer of all time. And it was really cool to hear his story. So yeah, it's a, it's a really fun space. If anybody's interested in just learning more about how TikTok is helping people professionally, definitely come check that out. So cool. And that's um, your, your actual TikTok is at BizToker. BizToker, yeah, sorry. BizToker, Biz yeah. <laughs> B-I-Z-T-O-K-E-R. And then your, your podcast is called BizTalk, like Correct. T-O-K, like TikTok. And then um, again, it's, it's Jade Can Dance. Is that right? That's correct. Awesome. Oh my gosh. So much cool stuff. You're in your, and what, who looks like a lot of, a lot of our listeners come from Instagram as of late. So once, once we started that whole channel, so what is your Instagram handle? Yeah. My Instagram is just my name. It's Kyle underscore Kaplanis and that's a K A P L A N I S. And yeah, you can also check out my daughters over there as well. You can just check her up under Jade Vincent and you'll be able to find her there if you're interested in checking her out over on Instagram. Awesome. And we'll also, we always put all of these links into the show notes so that it's easy access for everyone. Kyle, this was so awesome. What's, what's like your piece of advice for a parent who is going into a, a relationship with lots of kids and doesn't have kids <laughs> of their own? What's your one piece of advice for them? One piece of advice is to go in with open arms, knowing that you're not going to be perfect and don't come in as a parent figure. Just go in as a support person in the house. Let the kids open up to you. I'm telling you, it'll make life so much easier for everybody. It'll make it easier for mom for or for dad and ex-partners because no, there's no threat there. Just Go in like that and just realize you're. it's okay to make mistakes if you're a fresh like, parent and you're just joining in with these kids. And just tell the kids that you're going to be there for them and and let them, like I said, just come to you and open. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Such a cool topic. And I can't wait to follow you guys and check all, all the TikToks <laughs> and everything on Instagram. I'm excited. Thank you so much, Kyle. No, thank you. This was a blast. So fun. Thank you so much for listening. And we like to say, if you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone you love and be bold enough to share it with someone you don't. See you next time.